Okay, so today we are on a 2022 Pearl 62. That's a lot of twos, isn't it? Anyway, we're going to treat you to something really, really special today because not only are we doing a full C trial, uh, full tour, and we're going to do the full cost analysis, but we've got a really big surprise up our sleeves. So, let's get to it. Okay, so you're probably wondering why I've got this boat hook. You imagine this boat hook, I'm gonna turn it into like Harry Potter's broomstick, like you get on when he plays Quidditch. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it between my legs, and we're gonna fly around the boat, and I'm gonna give you a full tour of the boat. So let's go. <laughs> Okay, so this is a 2022 Pearl 62, and as you can see, she's a very pretty boat. So if we go up the starboard side, let me just get my brimming gear, here we go. I'm gonna zoom along. By the way, we're in Osborne Bay, just off the Isle of Wight. Now the styling of this boat is quite sharp. We've got the mirrored glass, we've got a lovely hard top, and as you can see, we've got the big blade windows. So if we just go down a little bit closer to the water, and I'll just show you the blade windows in all their glory. And if I just reverse my broomstick up a little bit, hold on a second, we're just going to reverse this up. I'm just still learning how to fly this little bit of rope puller. Right, and you can see the radar there on the top. So now let's zoom around the back. And well, this is fun actually, I like this. We're going to zoom around the back and it's so warm today i mean for september this is unbelievably warm let me just check my, my broom motor my it's all working yet we come around the back now and i'm just going to show you the port side we've got a few boats with us today in the in the bay you've got a high load platform there you've got a garage as well which which i'll show you when i land back on the boat and then um, you can see the port side here uh, which is actually very similar to the starboard side interestingly enough and um, we'll go right forward. Very, very striking styling from Pearl. And this boat's got the, um, the twin IPS 1200s, Portuguese bow. That's a Squadron 58 in the background, by the way. If you'll just, if we just go, uh, we'll just, let me just turn the broom around a second. I'm just gonna show you uh, in the bay with us today. We've also got, you see that Squadron? There you go, Squadron's 58 anchoring with us. So let me see if we can get a little bit closer to the uh, fore deck and see if I can, Kind of just cut. I'm not going to land yet. I'm just going to come down and show you the Portuguese bow. You've got the anchor arrangement, lots of space there. Um, now, now this one's going to be tricky. Um, we're going to try and give it a go. Uh, I, I, I'm new to this, but I'm going to try and fly through the um, hard top so you can see the. Well, I don't want to hit my head. I'm going to say we're going to. Right, ooh, take deep breath. Right, we're going to try. I'm going to try and fly through here so you can get an idea of the flybridge. So here we go. Watch my head. Okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. That's okay. And then I'm going to back out again. And then around the side, you can see we've got a big flybridge table. We've got a cockpit bar. And we've also got um, lots and lots of space up here. So if, I tell you what, if I go around the back of the flybridge, because there's nothing for me to hit there, then I should be able to do that. So you've got a big sun lounger to pour, as you can see. Beautiful space. And I'll, I will walk around this when I do my full tour in a minute, but I just wanted to show you from the from the uh, the, the, the broomstick rope hook that um, how I can actually see how big this boat is. So now if we come back down into the uh, cockpit, oh, we've got a bit of a wave. <laughs> We've got, we've got a gyro on, haven't we? This has got a gyro. We've got the gyro on. Yeah, we have. We've got a gyro on. Um, but the boat's moving around a bit. Just bear with us a second. Okay, now I'm going to try and land back into the cockpit straight of the saloon. So just bear with me a second when we come. And then uh, we'll continue the tour and the costings and all the interesting stuff. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. And... Okay, we're on the ground. Okay, so that was good fun. So let's put my broomstick stroke rope hook away, which goes up here. Everything's all been thought about. So let's start with the platform. So this boat has got a high-low platform, which will take a Williams or a tender with an outboard. 
and it's also got something quite clever which is a garage now the garage button is just here and if I press open hatch oh let me turn it on first okay. press open by the way Ian is my cameraman today and he says he knows quite a bit about this boat don't you Ian Some sort. yeah so there's the garage let's go and look at the garage it goes up higher that doesn't it Let's go higher. Let's go higher. Let's go higher. Come on. Let's go higher. Higher. I was going to say, I wasn't going to get in there at that. I've knocked my head. Okay, so it's got a garage, which is very unusual on a flybridge. Um, and here it is. And actually, the tender, see this little railway track? Oh, before you see the railway track, can you see my socks? Today, I have got Dracula socks which I got from Universal Orlando when I went on holiday the other week. Yeah. So this platform goes up and down, the tender goes on there, and then when you finish with the tender, you move it along this railway track and it goes in the garage. Now, you can't have any size tender because obviously the garage will only take certain types of tenders, but what size is this tender in? 385 with an outboard, yeah. Okay, we took it off because we didn't want it being in the way. And the other thing I'd just like to say is, this boat is for sale with us, and it's going to be online um, next week when this video goes live. So keep an eye out for it. It's 1.899 million UK VAT paid one owner. So enough about the platform and the garage. Let's go to the cockpit. So the cockpit is a good size too. And what I like about it is, firstly, it's got these lovely concertina doors which all fold back to make this big, big opening. And this is quite high too, which is really handy if you're having a drink. The aft seat in here, I think you could probably get six to eight of you around, which is very nice. And all the anchor equipment, the winches, the cleats and the stainless work is top, top quality. The owner on this boat has chosen to go with like a flexi teak, which is like uh, not a real teak. It looks very nice. And the good thing about Flexi Teak is it always looks clean. The bad thing about Flexi Teak is when it's sunny, sometimes it can get a little hot, very hot. But it does look good, and I must say I do like it. And actually, look at the size of this table. It's a lovely table. Um, this boat has got a really big beam. I think it's like 5.8 meters or something. And also, while we're here, let's just take this view in. How beautiful is it today? It is lovely, isn't it? It's stunning. It's stunning. So um, let's go and look at the saloon. Okay, so in the saloon for a 62 foot boat, the feeling is of space. And this has got a lovely light wood finish. The owner on this boat has made a couple of changes, which are quite minor. There's an extra handrail. He's got some opening side windows and there's some changes to the sofa. But generally speaking, this is a pretty standard looking boat. Um, the aft cabin, which will do before we go up to the flybridge is down a separate staircase here. Have a little look, Ian. We'll go down there in a bit. So that's the master. And then we've got three, three further cabins down below, which I'll show you in a second. The boat is aft galley, which is the fashion at the moment, and people love it. The fridges and what have you are here. Oh, Christ. Sorry, that's me. What's that? Fever tree, elderflower. Oh, there's some nice food in there. It looks like we've got some nice bacon and donuts for lunch and some champagne. Hmm. Better not drink that, I'll be the owners. So we have got, yeah, thanks Mark. We have got dishwasher. I'm not gonna open all the cupboards. You've got all the normal things. Most importantly, I've got all my notes here to tell you about all the costs on this boat because they're very, very interesting being a nearly a two million pound boat. I think you'll find the cost today fascinating. So. If we walk up into the upper saloon area, we've got a high-low TV behind here. We have a Dyson vacuum cleaner here. That's mine. Is it? And it looks like we've got a Sonos. Is that a Sonos? That's 5G. That's a 5G box. Um, quite contemporary. Now, this, this interior is designed by Kelly Hoppen, which is the same as all Pearl boats. And the feeling is very fresh and funky which may or may not suit you, but it looks very, very nice. Lots of glass. And also, 
the sofas are quite comfy, which is good. Um, we've got the battery masters under there. Just have a little look there. We've got a sea keeper on this boat. I'll tell you about some of the other things it's got um, in a little while. And the lower helm is here. Now, do we have a shout window? I suppose that's the shout window, isn't it? That is the shout window. Yeah. Sure, I suppose I've got to give it a go, haven't I? Right, there's no one on this side, so I'll shout. Oi, get the fenders in. So actually, that's a really good shout window. Very good. Very good. We've got a glass cockpit. If you look over my shoulder. And we've got really good visibility because like all modern boats, the windscreen's quite a long way forward. It's an IPS boat, so we've got a joystick, the normal Volvo controls, twin Garmin screens. That's the Sea Keeper control, which is doing a very good job today. It's only a tiny swell, but we are literally not moving. Um, and we've got the bow and stern thrusters and all the normal switches. Now, I do like to test the horn to see if it's a good horn, because for two million quid, you'd expect quite a good horn. Oh, nice. Yes. Sounds quite good, sounds like a nice quality horn. It's quite a long way away, is it at the back? Massively at the back. It's massively at the back, right. Okay, so let's jump downstairs and show you the forward accommodation. So um, last time on the last video, which I think was the, um, what was it? It was the Scarab, God, that's noisy. Uh, we had a problem with the sound. So I've bought some new DG, DJI stuff and it's in here, my microphone, you see it? Yeah, so today you should have crystal clear sound because it cost me £300, which is quite expensive. So let's go downstairs. So um, down these lovely stairs here, which are kind of hovering. And then we have got the VIP. We call this the VIP, which means it's the second to most important cabin. And if you come inside here, you'll see, again, we've got lots of space, lots of cupboards. A lovely big bed. I'm not going to jump on it. Uh, woodwork, very contemporary. I like these little black details. Black light switches, which are cool. Uh, don't film the mirror. And we've got a heads in here, which I think passes the floss test. But let's just test to see if it passes the floss test. Okay. You get a nice pearl tail. Okay. So... The floss test. Just da, da, da. Okay, the floss test is fully passed. Fully passed. Okay, that one might need a wash. Let's put that in the sink. Got a marble effect wall. We've got lovely little shelves here for trinkets. The shower is very, very trendy looking. I've never been in a shower, it's all black. I bet you that takes some cleaning. Yes. Because you probably do that. I do. And it's got all black handles and everything, which looks really cool, but probably needs a lot of cleaning too. It does. It does. But it does look cool, and that is the price for coolness. So let's jump into cabin two. Okay, so we're back in the kind of foyer area, and we've got cabin two here, which is a, a, a twin. And you've got your heating controls, your reading lamps, and some cool little detailing. Good headroom, little TV, nice window, air vent, all the normal stuff, and it's got a little wardrobe. Oh, with another Dyson, or is it a Dyson handle? Dyson That's handle. Okay. Um, no bathroom on this one. So this boat has got how many bathrooms? Three. three bathrooms, three heads. And then we have the other cabin here, which is exactly the same as that one. So nothing to look at here, apart from out the window. There's Osborne Bay, have a little look. Everyone's at anchor today, and uh, you don't get many days like this in England, I can tell you. Jack and Jill door to the bathroom, and this is the day heads. Which, I must say, it's pretty trendy. Door that goes to that cabin, so it's actually quite nice. Okay, so we're going to show you the master cabin, which you go back up here, and then we go down this staircase here by the way that's the dinette so you can cook here and eat here this handrail is extra and this table folds out 
But anyway, we're going to go down this staircase. It's got electric blinds up here as well, by the way. And you go down this lovely little teeny weeny star staircase, which reminds me of my house. And into the master. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, how do they make a 62 foot boat with a master cabin at the back that's this big? Well, it's all about engineering and clever engineering. So if you go IPS, which this boat is, the engines move to the back of the boat and that means you gain this extra space. Now, we could sit here and talk for hours about the pros and cons of IPS versus shaft drive, but one of the big advantages of IPS is you get space at the back of the boat back. And I must say, this is a spectacular master cabin for a 62 foot boat. Um, and the lighting's lovely, the windows. We've got the bathroom here, big TV. Bathroom's a good size. Big shower. Here, which I'll demonstrate with the same black hardware, lots and lots of space, nice big sink, big window. So this is what you get when you go IPS. Now, one of the differences about IPS is the boat is slightly less stable, it's slightly more fuel efficient, and that's because the back of the hull is flat to enable it to skid sideways. But there's no denying, this is a beautiful cabin. Okay, so we're back in the cockpit, and it's lovely there. Isn't it a lovely day? Right, let's go upstairs. Up the stairs to the flybridge, which is on the starboard side. Okay, so up at the upper helm here, you've got a copy of all the instruments you've got downstairs. Same screens, big fly screen to stop the air buffeting. Now we've just driven here from Southampton, uh, about 20 knots, and I must say it was very comfortable. There was no issues at all with buffeting. I've got a fantastic view. Um, I can see the bow easily if you'd have a little poke over the bow, Ian. You see you've got the Portuguese bow there. We're obviously anchored. Um, had three anchor locks, which I thought was a bit of an overkill. Very safe. Man. Very safe, but it took me 10 minutes to undo the three anchor locks. So just make sure you've got time to undo those anchor locks because it's very, very safe. Okay, and then as I walk back, and be careful, because there's a little step here, which I've already fallen down. But as you walk back, you've got the barbecue with the cooler there. Hope stick your head in there. We've got a big lid here with the barbecue and sink. Watch your fingers on that. It's quite heavy. And then, oh, a little button, yeah. What have we got here, fridge? More champagne. Hmm. I think the owner likes champagne. The owner and the owner's wife like champagne. Ice maker. Now, what do you think I think about ice makers? Nah. nah. We don't like ice makers. And we sorry, ice maker manufacturers. And the reason I don't like ice makers is because they always break. And then, the middle, yeah. Oh, okay. Little cupboard there. They always break, and unless you have uh, mineral water going to them, the ice tastes bad. Disgusting. Disgusting. So, this, and they, they, they're the bane of my life. They give me so much aggravation, because obviously, you do know we sell boats. I don't just make YouTube videos. We sell about 350 boats a year, so I've fixed more, well, no, actually, I've thrown out more ice makers than you can ever believe. Um, right, aft seating, lots and lots of space, huge sunbed there, nice wraparound seating here. What's this going on here? It looks like something happens here. Oh, storage just, hatches. Just storage hatches. Okay. And those are movable sunbeds. And no, movables, these, these move around, so you can move them around. I like this little guard rail that feels nice and safe. And of course, we have a sunroof, because we've got a hard top. And here's the sunroof, and it's really big. And actually, if you come here in, you can see, I can see the owner has even color coded the radar black, which looks really cool too. Let's try the horn, let's try the horn. Yeah, good idea, where's the button? Here it is. There we go. There's the horn. It's a nice horn. It does sound good. 
boat does look good. So I've worked out the cost on this boat, and as you can imagine, you know, let's not beat, not beat around the bush, they're pretty eye-watering. But you need to know what it costs to run a boat like this, and I've got them as accurate as, as possible by speaking to Ian, who is filming me and looks after the boat, and the owner, Mark, who actually pays the bills. So I thought, you can't get it wrong if you actually ask the man who pays the bills. So let's jump into it. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the costs, but it's a hot day. I've been given a lovely can of San Pellegrino Lemonida, whatever that is, lovely. And I'm gonna have a bit of that as I tell you the cost on this boat. So, we're gonna put these costs on the screen so you don't have to remember them. This boat is currently on the market with us, boats.co.uk, for 1.899 million pounds, including UK VAT. Um, if you wanna use the boat in Europe, you can. Um, they will treat it the same as they treat an XFAT boat, which means you've got 18 months to use it if you're a British citizen before you have to leave the EU and go back in. If you need advice about that, then speak to us at in the office if you're interested in buying this boat. Now, um, the finance companies on this boat, not all of them, but the finance company I spoke to about this boat would like a 50% deposit. Um, sometimes we can get it down to 30%, but for this finance example, I'm putting it at 50%. Now, bear in mind, a lot of people that do buy these boats from us just write a check. So we don't actually finance many of these boats. So when you think, God, that's a hefty deposit, 950,000, it is. Okay, so the finance in advance would be 950,000, which gives you a payment per month of a very reasonable 13,000 pounds direct debit. Keep a straight face. That is based on a 10 year straight line repayment at about 11.25% APR because interest rates have gone up. Very much. So the finance per annum, uh, if you put 50% deposit down, is £156,000. Okay, so we're now moving on to section two, fuel, which is, is as equally eye-watering as the finance costs. But if you want a big boat, you gotta pay big bucks. So at 20 knot speed, the fuel burn is 225 litres per hour for both engines. These are IPS 1200s. Diesel fuel, fuel price without the 60-40 split, so you, some people will get less than this, is £1.55 per litre, and that's September 2023. Because believe it or not, we are in September. I know it's unbelievable. So the cost is £350 per hour at 20 knots. The average UK boater, um, or European or even worldwide boater, does 50 engine hours. That doesn't mean he uses the boat for 50 hours, he uses the boat for hundreds of hours per year, but the engines are running for about 50 hours per year, which gives, with an adjusted cost for leaving the marina and coming back to the marina at a slower speed, uh, an adjusted cost of £15,000 per annum for fuel. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. Okay, so we're now moving on to fixed costs, section three. So, to berth this boat in Swanwick Marina in Southampton, where she is berthed, costs £18,500 per year. But it is a very nice marina, and they do make really nice bacon sandwiches in that cafe. Servicing, well, the IPS engines aren't too bad. They're about £3,500 per year. The other maintenance costs about seven and a half thousand pounds per year to include the pods and the, the um, gyro um, service and obviously cleaning and anti-fouling. And then you've got the insurance, which is 10,000 pounds per year. So if you add those all together, it comes to 39,500 pounds in fixed costs. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to section four, which is variable costs. So depreciation, this is a very difficult boat for me to work out its depreciation, but I think the new prices keep going up each year by about five or ten percent. That pulls up the second-hand prices, but I think you're kidding yourself unless you dial in a hundred thousand pounds a year depreciation. If you do better than that, well done. If you don't, bad luck. But it's that kind of money I think you need to dial in. 
Fuel, we've already done that, it was 15,000 pounds. The finance, we've done that, which is 156,000 pounds. So your total variable costs are about 271,000 pounds a year. We call that the cash burn figure. That's your depreciation and the things that um, you have to pay for like fuel and what have you. So section five is JB's measure of pleasure which is where I give the boat points based on my experience of boats. So accommodation, well, it's a four cabin boat. We've got three heads. Um, I think the master is lovely. I think the garage is quite nice. So I'm going to give it 10 out of 10 for accommodation oh, yeah. because it packs a lot of punch uh, for 62 feet. Style, well, we'll show you a running shot now. Um, we, when I was uh, overtaking the boat earlier on my boat hook, doing my Harry Potter. Um, you can see that she's quite a pretty boat um, at speed. So I'm gonna give a nine out of 10. And the Kelly Hopping interior does look nice too. Oh. Fun, well, I mean, um, big boats like this aren't loads of fun. Um, it's not the kind of boat that you go herring around on or throwing around. So you can't really get high scores of fun on these type of boats, but it's gonna get a seven out of 10. And the running costs, well, you know, let's be honest. They're quite a lot. It's a big boat. If you want a big boat, you've got to pay some big money. So the running costs, they're not bad for a big boat. God, that plane is noisy, isn't it? But, can't, can't you? I can hear it though. Uh, the running costs, six out of 10. Quality, well, the quality is good. Um, there's little bits and pieces, which, um, you know, in my opinion, could be a little bit better. I'm not gonna detail in, in this video, but the quality is pretty good. And so I'm gonna give it eight out of 10 for quality, um, which gives it a total score of 40 out of 50, which is 80%, which I think is pretty good. So this is the high-low platform. It comes out and then it lowers down into the water. And as you can see, it's very, actually it's not lowering down yet. It's, oh, it's still going out. Right, and then it starts lowering down. Ooh. So obviously don't put it right down in the water. As you can see, it goes down into the water and you float the dinghy on here and then off you go basically skiing and away you go. And then back onto the platform and straight into the garage and away you go. I told you not to go into the water. Sorry, yeah. These are my new socks. 